Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for being here. I put my uh, presentation under the title Become a Problem Lover, Not Avoider. And I, I mentioned this particularly here because I have, uh, you know, seen in the past that, you know, entrepreneurs actually try to go the easiest way uh, and they don't really understand the problem in depth and start creating things right away rather than to actually uh, think about the problem and how the problem will develop in the future. And I think future is a very, very important aspect on this one. So quick thing to me, I used to be a full-time professor and I am, I'm, I'm a professor at three different universities, but I basically do that on the side. Uh, I'm mainly an entrepreneur, which I have been before, started a lot of companies. I will talk about this in a second as well. And I wanna highlight one thing here is I have a brewing degree and distilling degree. I think that's very important, particularly also from a Munich perspective or German perspective, but it should highlight that you should always try to do and never forget forget about what you really, uh, you know, what you're really enthusiastic about. So I want to talk about today um, health tech startups in general. How do you define the success as well and how failure? And uh, maybe the definition is not quite as you expect and it's not too much uh, economically driven. So uh, with that in, in, in line, I'd like to, you know, show you some of the companies that I started since uh, 1993. Also not important to look at the detail. What's important here is green that was a successful exit and a successful exit just to so we have a little bit of understanding how I define this is if I got anything back. So I invested money, I invested time. If I got anything back, I already decided, I define it as successful exit. That probably is not correct with respect to what venture capitalists or private equity investors would see, but that's my definition. Uh, red is close, disaster, I uh, was not good. And black here is still existing. So my hopes is still high. Even though I have to say that I probably don't think that most of them will actually create a what the venture capital would call a successful exit. I also uh, invested a lot in uh, since 2002 in companies, and you see here there's a lot more red in the invested than there is in the in the founded one. There's a lot less green, and uh, there's only a few blacks left. So my my you know summary on this one is I'm a fairly decent founder maybe, but a lousy investor. Um, I, I, I don't want to generalize that, but, you know, sometimes you actually, as an investor, fall in love with technology and you actually miss some of the aspects that may be important. But the question is, how do you find success and failure? And I, I, I told you this already for me, a success was here uh, uh, defined as a financial success, but I would rather see it as for me, success is something where I learned something, where I wanted to apply something for the future and where I basically had new insights for myself. Is it the return on investment for for, uh, for investors? Not really. I think um, again, you know, we need to make money when we invest something to get some money back. But I, for myself, don't define it as a financial uh, success in general. Get rich yourself. It's a nice uh, side effect if that really happens. But I also don't believe that that is something that uh, should be the you know the guiding principle of uh, of your activities and your investments. Um, Maybe more like, are you able to stay in your life and uh, also the life of people that depend on you? Or is it, and that's how I really feel feel about it now, trying to help solve big problems. And I'm focusing here on big problems. What we really do a lot is do uh, incremental innovations rather than actually focusing on the big aspects. Or in, in my case, also living your passion and and and. and uh, entrepreneurship and startup is to a certain extent also passion. There's a lot of pain with it. And I think uh, it would be really cool if that's also your passion. I want to start with a movie that actually should be running in the background now. It's uh, from Monty Python. And what it does is it shows um, basically uh, an, an, a surgery room. And uh, you will see in a, in a second, maybe I'll, I'll wait a little bit till you come to that point in the video. They will actually ask, putting all the equipment in, is there something missing here? And what is missing? The patient is missing. And one of the most important aspects on um, of uh, you know what we do in healthcare and the startup is we need to make sure the patient stays is and stays in the center of our procedure. And a lot of things we do in healthcare is with respect to dealing with the doctors, dealing with the system, dealing with reimbursement. We always ask about money all the time, but not often do we actually see the uh, activities from the perspective of the patient. 
So I think the patient has to stay in the center, is in the center and has to stay in the center of our activities and of our attention all the time. Another thing I would like to maybe give you a little bit of an aspect was one of my first companies. Luckily, that company or that activity was successful. I was dealing in 1993. I came back from the United States and I was actually, you know, I stole an idea from the United States of actually putting MRI, CTs and PET scanners and cath labs in mobile trailers. And um, this was started again in 1993, uh, you know, went through subsequent steps. It was sold, resold. I started it again. I sold it again. And um, what was uh, interesting after, you know, all these years, it ended up to be the largest operator of these mobile diagnostic systems in Central Europe. But when I go back in 1992 or 1993, when I started or I wanted to start the company, there was the the idea or the, the 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 general feedback this is not really needed who needs mobile mri system we already have 100 mris in germany what do we need any more and just interesting enough today we have 2500 in, in in germany so there was a lot of growth right still in there but people were completely um underestimating the market they were completely underestimating the demands and they were completely underestimating the need for something like that they did not understand the problem so my one of the first things I learned is do not ever listen to consultants that know why it will never work. Don't do this. It will never work. So by the way, don't ever talk to your parents because they will always tell you it will never work and they're always afraid of activities. And also, you know, focus on problem understanding. And with that, I believe in today's times, exponential times, business plans are pretty much obsolete at the time you wrote them. And the question is, should this, our business plans actually in general obsolete? Should we not actually focus on something else, maybe more on focusing on the problem and how the problem will develop and then focus on learning? And another thing I, um, I actually, now when I actually wrote this slide, uh, I, I decided that it's not only important not to listen to consultants that know why it will never work, but also to ones that say, I know how it will work because consultants do not know how it will work. The only one that would know how it work is at, uh, essentially you who is actually working on it. So I think you also need a good recipe um, for innovation, particularly in this phase. So my recipe is I, I want to focus on activities that have to do with prediction, prevention, personalization, and participation of the individual. I also would like to focus on things in, in my development process that improve the clinic, clinical and patient experience, obviously create a better outcome. But what's very often forgotten is if we don't focus on lower costs, we will not receive a disruptive, we will not receive disruption. I will talk about disruption in a second as well. So disruption and cost reduction are the essential things for just creating disruption, creating lasting innovation. And that's very often forgotten in innovation process. But only that, uh, if we do this, it will not help us if we don't also take care of environmental uh, concerns about our planet health and about an uh, economic concerns. So only if we have a stable an, uh, economy, a stable plan, we'll receive sustainability in healthcare. So that's very important to actually consider that as well. And the question always is, uh, are we actually working on this? And I, I'd say not really. So let me go back to, you know, focusing a little bit on disruption. So having this uh, recipe in place, I think we need to have or need to think about a, a shift in mindset and um, uh, also think about different ways of uh, creating innovation. And we need to think 10 times rather than 10%. So we need to think a little bit bigger. And for that, we probably also need a different tool set. So innovation towards disruption. Innovation is something doing the same things a little better. Disruption means making things that make the old things obsolete. So replacing them. And actually in healthcare, just like with any other thing, you have to see that only you cannot change things just a little bit. If you change something and when it's change a system, then you actually have to replace the existing system completely. And um, with that respect in medicine, what we're working on is a lot on making traditional medicine a little better rather than thinking of uh, or applying the technologies that we have to create a completely new medicine. And I think we have enough issues that prove that we should go that way. So looking one more time at the individual health, uh, it depends on a lot of these factors. Uh, I mentioned some of the planetary health, sustainable health, socioeconomic environments. All of these components account for 85% of health, of your personal health. The quality of the healthcare system is only 15%, but we focus 
our health tech activities on these 15%. So we need to actually um, think a little different with respect to healthcare in the 2020s and beyond that. And we have a lot of other issues that we have to deal with. We have we we, we spend a lot of money on it, on, on healthcare. It's really not uh, doing uh, an excellent job of, 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 of uh, creating what we call healthy longevity. And we need to actually move towards precision medicine, value-based medicine, patient-centric medicine. We need to spend more money on prevention and uh, also on, on, on looking uh, you know, on whether patients or individuals are actually following up on, on, on living their own health care. So there's a lot of other unresolved issue. What are we going to do if we get older again? There's unequal access to health care. There's a lot of big issues that we need to address. And I just want to focus one more time. What I said before is try to address big problems, not necessarily only small problems. Or if you address small problems, have a plan of how can they affect or be used to actually create uh, a, a, a big impact uh, in your life. So questions lead to answers. You need to ask a lot of questions. I, I don't want to go into these questions in detail. I just want to list them here. This is a crowded slide. But ask yourself questions with respect to the future. For example, if we solve chronic diseases, what will that mean for longevity? If we solve all these problems, what will that mean for hospitals? What will they mean for the healthcare as it is right now? And, you know, very often these questions are not asked and uh, obviously then you don't have the right answer. Also, what will education need to look like? What will searchers be like? All these questions that uh, are connected to technologies that we have available, they should be uh, uh, asked and then uh, the, the questions will lead you to new innovations. So uh, I, I, another idea or aspect that you should do, always design a future that you like to see yourself, not a future that is um, determined by somebody else. And uh, don't forget to have some fun and be creative uh, during this process. Now, very often um, I hear that also from uh, creating startups, you have to have this unicorn approach, right? Exponential growth, you wanna create a monopoly and all kinds of other things. I don't believe that that should be the goal. I think the goal should be rather having a CEPRA approach, having a purpose, um, focus on quality, uh, on collaboration, and you know, measure that the whole thing with user success or with patient success or uh, healthcare improvement success. And please remember, and that's a little bit of uh, focus on this unicorn, unicorns do not exist, zebras do. So I, I think there's a lot more you can do if you follow this, uh, this uh, purpose approach rather than <clears throat> trying to always go for uh, you know, huge growth. And there's a lot of innovation methods out there. I don't want to go in detail in them. I just want to mention two of them, the Purpose Launchpad Health that I co-designed and maybe also a future look on this one. Future look would be, uh, we did, for example, a future of healthcare approach uh, as a cartoon story creation. What would healthcare look like in 20 years? There's a lot of different uh, stories that came up with. There's also a link uh, mentioned here. You can download the stories. Very, very cool. Future stories can give you ideas of how you have to do things in the in the present. And the second thing is having a, 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 a tool set that actually asks different questions. It starts with a purpose and has eight segments. It goes around, has for every one of these different tools available. Uh, some of the tools I mentioned here, I don't have to go into detail in them. Uh, there's, a, <clears throat> there's a special uh, tool for creating a purpose for uh, you know, looking at what your community look like, uh, you know, developing exponential growth and actually also uh, viability with respect to business models. And the nice thing about this is you can actually see uh, with a radar, with a visual feedback of where you are in that process and what you have to do to correct that. So also that one, just here quickly listen, you can actually get some information if you look at the links. So summary, what have I learned as an entrepreneur well, you need to reduce the odds of failure, improve the odds of success. And you can do that with these kind of innovation tools. Um, you need to look in the future because the future will give you information, you know, what technology will cause uh, uh, and, and the effect that you can already foresee to a certain extent. Of course, nobody can look really into the future, but you can be prepared for that. It is difficult to uh, find the right way, uh, but please don't actually focus on the right way that you think it is, but eliminate all the wrong ones. So try to experiment a lot and find out what you can eliminate. And um, please, you know, ask yourself a question, why am I doing this? And what is my big personal purpose and the purpose of the company that I'm trying to go for? What have I learned as an investor? Well, 
I think business plans are obsolete and kind of worthless. I don't believe in them anymore. I, I want to see actually certain tools. I want to see particularly if you understand the global problem behind it and what is the 10 year solution to it. I would like you to tell me what is the staffing need, the technological and finding this need now, and then in one year and three years. And then also that you're willing to learn and that you're willing to actually create a milestone uh, plan with filled with experiments and please uh, embrace failure. Failure is something really, really, really good. And then as my last slide, uh, I just want to uh, also uh, thank uh, everybody for ha uh, having me on this one. I, I, I wrote a book. It's called The Novel Innovation Design for the Future of Health. will be available in September 22 as a e print and ebook. So a lot of the aspects that I mentioned are, uh, are, uh, are already listed there. And please think about or embrace that creating uh, innovation in the healthcare space needs to, uh, you know, you know, ident you need to identify the problem, ideate around the problem space in this unmet uh, space, be intentional, disruptive, and, you know, think about implementation and be interdisciplinary. Thank you very much. I hope that was uh, uh, entertaining and uh, you learned something with it.